Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Makesh's Tech Space. Uh, currently, I am doing a w tutorial series where I show you how to uh, set up a high availability WordPress um, website within the LightCell um, hosting environment. Um, this is the second episode of that series. In the first episode, I have a little diagram here that I want to show you. In the first episode, uh, we actually created a WordPress website within LightCell. We created an S3 bucket in the AWS system. We also set up an IAM user uh, that can talk to that S3 bucket. And we set up a plugin and configured the IAM user's keys within that plugin so that any media files that you upload into your website for your posts or pages, uh, they get uploaded directly to S3 bucket. And then when a visitor uh, is visiting your website, the those media files are served out of S3 instead of your website, uh, WordPress website. So in this video, uh, second episode of that of those of that series, we will be doing uh, the database portion of it. So uh, the light cell database so that we can actually have the S3 bucket separate and the light, the, the light cell database separate from the WordPress instance. Um, so part of this uh, video will have uh, these steps uh, done. So create a database service in LightCell. We'll export our WordPress database from the existing WordPress website. Uh, we'll have to import that database into the new database service. And then, of course, finally, you know, update the connection string so that the WordPress site can connect to the database for the data. And finally, we'll do some WordPress uh, testing to make sure everything is still functioning. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, by the end of the video, then you'll have uh, your WordPress instance with its file system and its database on uh, different services. Um, that will actually start to enable us uh, for our next video in creating uh, multiple WordPress websites in different regions and load balance all of that. Um, and that would make it a high availability WordPress site. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, um, so I'm in my AWS LightCell dashboard. Um, we have our WordPress instance that we created in our last video. This time, our next step will be to create a database service. Uh, I'm gonna leave the zone and uh, region settings uh, default. Uh, in the MySQL uh, uh, version, we have three options, 5.6, 5.7, and 8.0. Um, I'm not really sure uh, if it'll make any difference, but you know, let's try going with the latest version. So we have um, we have the most latest and secure version of MySQL. Um, let's go ahead and come down here to the billing or price per month. Um, you, as you can see, you can pick different plans. We'll go with this one, which is the free one for this tutorial. Leave the name as is and create the database. All right, uh, while it's creating the database, um, next we'll go ahead and export the data from our existing WordPress database. And so um, uh, so we'll have that ready for import once, once the database is ready for us to use. Uh, okay, so um, I'm here back into my instances um, uh, dashboard. Uh, we're going to go into our open up the SSH terminal. If you've configured your own SSH software to connect to your website, uh, you could use that. What I'm going to use is the one that's built into a light cell dashboard. Um, first step, once you're logged in, sudo into the root user. Uh, because the MySQL service is running as root, so any activity that we need to do with our database MySQL uh, we'll have to do as root. So here our plan is to export the database into a file so that we can actually import it into the database service. So um, there is a command that we'll have to type. Uh, it's a MySQL dump command. It exports the database from a, a MySQL server into a file on the file system. Uh, so I'll go ahead and paste that uh, command in the uh, show notes. 
um, so that you can copy that and use it for your purposes. Um, so let's go ahead and start typing it. MySQL dump is the name of the command. Dash u. Uh, the root is the pass uh, username for our MySQL instance. Dash p, uh, and we won't put any um, uh, password in here. It'll it will ask me for the password when I actually run the command. Uh, the name of the database. So I know it's Bitnami WordPress. You would put the name of your database if it's if it's something different. And then we're going to send that into a file. I just I'm going to name it wp-database.sql, um, and then we're going to give it a couple of flags. Uh, this flag here um, says to um, export the databases, um, as well as another flag which will indicate. Um, I believe this indicates that. Um, uh, add an add and drop uh, command within the file so that if I already had an existing database it would drop it and create the database as part of the script so I don't have to do that separately so I want to do that once you have this typed up now it's going to ask you for the password so I'm going to uh, paste in the password and I'll be right back well I have my password uh, copied to the clipboard and if I right click right here uh, where it's asking me for the password I hit enter it will run so if no errors that means it ran successfully if we are to view our file wp database dot sql there it is so here's our file that has all of our data and the appropriate commands to create the same database in another mysql database server so as you can see, it creates the database if it doesn't exist and starts to create all the tables and all the data. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's go see if our um, database service has been provisioned. It hasn't yet. It's still in the process of creating. So I'm going to take a brief pause and I'll come back once it's ready to go. Okay, I'm back. Uh, and as you can see, our database has been provisioned. If I click on it, um, lots of information here. First and foremost, um, the database username, the password, uh, the endpoint, which is the, um, you could guess, I guess you could say it's the server name or the host name of your database. Uh, the port 3306, this is the default MySQL port. Um, if you have um, the MySQL workbench or a software on your computer that you want to use to connect to the database, uh, you'll use this port to connect to it. If you did want to connect from your own computer into the database, um, you'll have to uh, enable this um, uh, before you can con configure it. Um, uh, the way we are going to import data into this database is using command line. So uh, let's go back into our um, SSH window. This is our uh, uh, WordPress instance terminal window I'm logged into. Uh, if you remember, we um, uh, already have an export file of our data right here. That's the data that we'll insert into the uh, MySQL database service that we just created in um, LightSail. You need the username, password, and your endpoint. So these are, are the three pieces of information we're going to need to start the import process. So uh, let me clear this so we have a clear blank screen to start with. Um, so as I mentioned, we're uh, these are a couple of command lines, uh, MySQL command lines uh, that I'll put in the show notes. Um, so from our SSH window of our WordPress instance, we'll type in MySQL dash u, and now we'll type in the name of the database username, and that was right here db master user so db master user so dash u means username then we'll type in space dash p and we won't put the password in here um, again I don't want to show the password here but uh, we'll just leave it blank so that when we actually execute the command 
uh, it will prompt us for the password and I simply have to paste it. Um, then the third parameter that we need for this command is actually dash h. Dash h means a uh, host and here we will put in the endpoint URL of our database service. Um, so that's, uh, if you go here, this is the host name right here. So let's go ahead and copy that in our window. We need to paste that. So paste it in here and let's take that off. And then if I right click, it's right here. So again, let's review the MySQL command. You're going to type in MySQL space dash U and then give it the username, which is DB master user that we see right here. Uh, dash P for the password. We won't provide the password here because because when we um, hit enter to execute the command, it will it should ask us for the password, and that way we're not typing it in here in any clear screen. Um, dash H for the host name, and then the endpoint URL of our database service, cloud database service. So when you hit enter, as you'll see, it's asking for the password. So I'm going to go and copy that password from my text file. I'll paste it in here and then I'll come back and we'll execute this command. Okay, I've copied the password and we'll paste it right here. If it worked, it should let us in. So there we go. Um, just to make sure you're not connected to your um, local server MySQL account, you can see that this server version is 8.0.11. And so we are connected to that database service that we just created here. Um, so now you're logged into the MySQL database command line. Uh, we can type in a command called show databases. And as you'll see, these are the databases that are set up by default, I guess, when you install uh, or, or provision a database service. Uh, the Bitnami WordPress database is not in here, so that's going to be our next step is to import the database. Um, so to import, we're going to type in a command slash dot and then the file name. Uh, I'm When I connected to MySQL, I was already in the home Bitnami uh, folder. That's where I have my uh, SQL file. If your SQL file is in a different location or, or you happen to change that uh, directory path before coming uh, logging into MySQL, then you'll want to give it the absolute path. But since I'm in the same folder, all I have to do is type in the file name. So it's wp-database.sql. So again, I'll, I'll put this command in the show notes, um, but uh, all you need to do is hit enter after you hit this command. And there we go. Our tables are created. If you scroll up, you'll see, you know, it's creating all the different various tables that are needed for WordPress to run. And let's show databases again. And now you'll see Bitnami WordPress is created. So now we have our database created. Next step is to connect now our WordPress website uh, in you know connection string, update the connection string to point to this database. Uh, and that's what we're going to have to do in the WP config. So um, give me one second and I'll show you how to do that. So to get out of the MySQL um, command line interface, we'll just hit type quit. Now we're back to our server prompt clear on that um, let's see uh, now we're going to go into the WordPress folders oh, not this one let's see apps WordPress HT docs all right, perfect. So here we'll modify the connection string. I'll show you what I have and what needs to be modified. Um, okay, so in the WP config, you have the uh, setting for the database name. We can leave that the same since our database name is the same on the new server, on the database service. Uh, the username will modify that to be DB Master User, and then the database password will be the password that um, 
was given uh, was set up by the database service and that is the password here. so you'll need to copy this um, you can click on show and then it'll, it'll have the password copy that and and you'll paste that uh, over the existing password uh, once you have that set up um, we need to do actually one more thing uh, the DB host as I re as we recall right now we're using instead of the local database we're going to use the uh, database service in light cell so we'll paste the host name the endpoint URL right here we'll we'll paste that into the host uh, and it'll it'll be everything between the quotes so it, remove the port number and uh, local host the entire string and replace it with the endpoint URL once we have those done save it and then we'll see if our WordPress site is uh, still working okay I've made my changes so now you'll see I left the database name the same the DB user is DB master user the password and the DB host this is the long string that connects to the database service we'll go ahead and save this file and see if that works okay let's open up a browser window load up our site and as you can see the data comes up so that means we are successfully connected to um, this database service we're no longer using our local MySQL database so coming back to our diagram we've now completed this step so uh, that's it for this video um, I hope you found it useful if you have any questions or run into any problems leave them down below if you like the video um, give it a thumbs up um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't and also click on that bell icon to get notifications when I upload the third video or any other future videos all right and uh, so I'll conclude this second episode right here thanks for watching